Hi, my name is Bernie Maloney of Powered by Teams, an Agile consultancy based in Silicon Valley, here with another episode of Agile 5x5, a series of short videos where we give you tips on Agile topics, usually in five minutes or less. Today is going to be a special episode where we're going to do a summary of Scrum in less than 10 minutes. Now, if you want to follow along as I do this progressive reveal about everything in Scrum, in the comments for this video, you're going to find a link to a URL where you can download a PDF of this diagram, and you can follow along as I give you a summary of Scrum in less than 10 minutes. Here we go. Scrum is a lightweight, simple to learn, but difficult to master framework for managing complex adaptive work and delivering products of the highest possible value. It's purposefully incomplete like a alphabet or a musical scale. It's a set of enabling constraints, lightweight, simple to learn, but difficult to master. And it allows you to create things within those enabling constraints. Scrum really only has about 20 moving pieces. They're depicted here in this diagram. There's three accountabilities that you see in the middle. There's three artifacts, the squares that you see around the outside. There's five events, the solid circles that you see here. There's one activity, the dotted circle, and it's all underpinned by five values as well as empiricism. Now, empiricism is all about making decisions based on what's observed or known. Um, it's the scientific method, and it really has three elements, transparency, inspection, and adaptation. You're going to see that reflected in these elements of Scrum. So let's go ahead and jump in. A good place to start with Scrum is with one of the events, the sprint, which is a time box of up to one month in length within which all of the work occurs. It's a container for all of the other events. Now, you'll probably set the length of that time box based on a few factors. Um, some common ones might be availability of your stakeholders for feedback, uh, maturity of your team, complexity of the work. The more complex the work, the less mature the team, probably the shorter sprint you want to run because those are free, more frequent inspect and adapt loops where you can get feedback and keep things on course. Now, Another good place to start with Scrum is with one of the artifacts, the product backlog, which is an ordered list of everything that you want to go into the product. It's the single source of truth from which the team is going to work, and it's centered around a product goal. That's the commitment for the product backlog. That product goal is a medium to long term, tangible future state of the product. It gives the team a target to plan against. Now, if things don't fit with the product goal, they don't belong in the product backlog. And if they're not in the product backlog, the team probably shouldn't be working on them. Now, product backlog is owned by one of the accountabilities in a Scrum team, and that's the one known as a product owner, who's a single individual, not a committee. Their chief responsibility is to order that product backlog in order to maximize the value of the product resulting from the work of the developers. Developers in Scrum, that's another accountability. They're anybody who does the work. That term applies to both coders and testers in software. So they should be cross-functional in nature. That reduces handoffs, which means that you can have faster inspect and adapt loops. Um, now, there's a third accountability in a Scrum team. That's the Scrum Master. They're not the master of the team. They're more like a coach or a referee, which is why I draw them with a whistle. They're there to help the developers, the product owner, and the whole organization get better with Scrum to optimize the flow of value end to end. Now, all three of those accountabilities are held within a Scrum team, which is a group of 10 people or less when you include the product owner and the Scrum Master, just big enough to accomplish something significant, but small enough that there's not handoffs, even in communication, particularly since that's a cross-functional team. Now, uh, a sprint begins with the event known as sprint planning. Okay, All of the events have time boxes for them, but um, sprint planning only happens once at the beginning of the sprint, so you might scale it with the length of the sprint. What it says in the Scrum Guide is sprint planning is up to eight hours for a one-month sprint, so that works out to about two hours per week of your sprint length. There's three topics that go on in sprint planning, a why, a what, and a how. The product owner should come into sprint planning with a set of selected product backlog items that are candidates for the sprint. That's the what element here. And a why, this set of elements, why now, something that helps them hang together. During sprint planning, what goes on is with the developers, items are pulled into the second artifact, the sprint backlog. You get an idea of where you are right now and where you want to go 
as you start sprint planning, um, that's the sprint goal, something that drives cohesion and focus for all of the work during the sprint. By the end of sprint planning, the team should agree on what their sprint goal is that drives that cohesion and focus. And during sprint planning, the how element is the developers take those product backlog items and they figure out how to turn them into valuable increments by the end of the sprint. Now, um, Scrum is protected both in terms of these time boxes, but also in terms of scope. See, the product owner owns the product backlog, but the developers own the sprint backlog. Once a sprint starts, nobody can force new work into a sprint without the developer's permission. It's got to at least be a uh, negotiation. Hey, what are you willing to give up to get it? Is a common conversation there. Now, if something really important comes up, the product owner does have a superpower. It's called canceling a sprint. It's rarely used. In fact, in 25 years of practice, I've seen it happen exactly zero times. Across thousands of my clients and students, I've only heard of it about a handful of times. About the only time you cancel a sprint is when your sprint goal is no longer relevant. Some of the criteria that I'll look for are uh, life safety. That's a good reason to cancel a sprint. Line down, can't produce any value. Revenue down, can't collect any value. Um, really, business critical things are about the only thing to consider for canceling a sprint. Otherwise, it's like, hey, how about if that stuff waits for the next sprint and it gets parked in the product backlog until the next sprint? Now, Scrum is also a set of nested inspect and adapt loops, one focused on the process, one focused on the product. The tightest of these is the event known as a daily Scrum, which is a 15 minute per day planning meeting. It's there for the developers to inspect their progress towards the sprint goal and to adapt their plans for the next day's work. Now you can get status by listening in, but that's not the purpose. It's there actually as a planning meeting. For status, if your stakeholders want status, there's another inspect and adapt event near the end of a sprint known as a sprint review. The time box for that is up to four hours for a one month sprint. But if you have various sprint lengths, that works out to about one hour per week of your sprint length. What goes on in sprint review is the team together with the stakeholders inspect and adapt progress towards the product goal. And they do that by looking at the third artifact, the usable increment that was produced during the sprint. And its commitment is a definition of done, which is an intrinsic quality standard. Hey, did we build this in such a way that we could actually put it into production? Is it, you know, is it done? Now, you might get feedback in sprint review. Maybe the market conditions have changed. Maybe the priorities have changed. And so that feedback might adjust things that go on in your product backlog. This is why you want to have sprint review before you have your next sprint planning. So you've got the freshest information about the state of the product and the state of the market. Now, um, after sprint review, there's one final inspect and adapt event known as a sprint retrospective. The time box for that is less than three hours per sprint. Most organizations will scale this. So like for a one week, they'll do a one hour for two weeks. They'll do two hours for three or four weeks. They'll do three hour sprint retrospectives. The retrospective is there for the team to look for ways to increase their own quality and effectiveness. Now, because they're looking at themselves, you want this to be a psychologically safe event. So uh, really a team can say no if people want to come into it. Now, if a team wants to invite people in, I'm good with that. That's a pretty good indicator of psychological safety. We've taken a look at a lot of the elements in Scrum already, the three accountabilities in green in the middle, the five events in red around the outside, the three artifacts in blue along with their commitments. There's one other activity that goes on in Scrum. It's called product backlog refinement. Now, refinement is an ongoing activity to get things ready for upcoming sprint plannings. It's not like you do a sprint and then you do refinement and then you do the next sprint. It's they kind of go on concurrently. So, and things you might do in refinement or you might reorder things in the product backlog, you might clarify things, you might split things, really anything you need to do to get ready for upcoming sprint planning. Cool. Now, all of that is underpinned by those five values of openness, respect, courage, focus, and commitment, as well as transparency, inspection, and adaptation. That's everything in Scrum in one diagram and eight minutes and 30 seconds. Now, if you liked this video, please like, subscribe, and share to this video and the Powered by Teams YouTube channel. And if you want to stay in touch with us for more of these videos or for some help with your own organizations, um, you can reach us with that QR code that you're going to see over there or the URL right below it of poweredbyteams.com contact. Until the next video, be well, stay vibrant, and thank you.